One Sunday morning in September, I was asked to paint a carnival cutout for a pie festival featuring a granny and pie. It's the Lily Factor! Ding! At the church I attend, there was this pie festival going on um, in October, so it, I was asked to paint a carnival cutout for this festival for photo ops and such, and it had to include a granny and pie, so I brainstormed it all digitally to project onto the final canvas, because it's just easier that way, <laughs> but um, I thought in terms of a couple of different things. For starters, foreshortening the granny, because I realized I probably won't, once I learned the height of the wood, I knew I wasn't going to be able to fit a full body on there. And also thinking in terms of covering the characters' faces every now and then to see, do you believe it without faces <laughs> involved? So I learned I had to show the granny's arms to make it believable as a granny, make her hair fuller. And I tried to set up a scene that would be fun for families and also really, you know, just take that pie thing further. Like the window resembles pie, but I wanted to feature some fun stuff where characters were also arranged a little further up for taller people could be, you know, granny or whatever, and then the shorter people could be more up in the front. So I, you know, put a guy getting pie in the face, a dog pleading for pie, put it all in a kitchen scene with a cat kind of like smushing pie and stuff. And then got out the projector and projected it onto the canvas, which was re recollected shards of wood put together and it was sealed with white gesso, but it looked like that, though that's the backside. I didn't get a picture of what it looked like before the gesso, but I have to thank my mom. She took care of that for me. But when I projected the first thumbnail on there, I realized the sizing wasn't quite right. So here I am readjusting it and there goes the granny's feet. <laughs> But yeah, so once it was all said and done, it was a matter of projecting it up there and then just sitting down and figuring out, where do I start? How's this going to come together? What is the idea of what colors I'm going to use? Well, it was in the fall, so I wanted it to be very colorful and vibrant and a little fall color schemed. So what I did here was I got out some pink paint and I decided to use that as the... Basically, it's kind of a line art per se because I didn't do any sketching here, but I just went over the important lines of the projected image with pink so that I could know what, where the characters were in the scene and how to paint over all of that. Now, in terms of the setup, it was in a garage, so not my usual artwork space. So like day one, it was actually kind of warm out, but day two and three, cold. It ended up being just the way time was arranged. There was a lot to set up. So the wood there, you know, that had to be bought, that had to be sealed with the gesso so I could actually paint over it and not get a splinter. <laughs> and then there were two wood stands, which you'll probably see a few more times here. So I'm not going to like take the time to really describe them, but there were wood stands that my dad built to uh, prop the canvas up so I could paint on it, but also so that it could be standing when it actually went to the pie festival. And oftentimes I had to block the projected image to see what I was painting, but also, yeah, setting up the projector too. It was supposed to set up and... <laughs> and definitely different from what I'm used to, but push came to shove, getting all those things in order, I ended up having three days to paint all of that. I also was battling a cold, which is why it ended up being three days, because there probably, I think I had like two other days I could have done it, but I was not feeling quite right. <laughs> and so... Especially the next two days where it was actually cold outside, that made the cold even more lively. <laughs> but back to the painting. As I said, I went over it with pink paint to get the basic lines because I figured anything I paint over this, it's going to keep it pretty saturated and warm colored, which is always nice. I learned quickly doing this too that I also had to kind of pound the brush onto the canvas. Somehow my mom got that gesso in all the cracks, but I had difficulty getting the paint in the cracks of this wood. It was a wonderful texture. I love texture and the texture 
Wow, that's so redundant. But you know what I'm trying to get at here. I'm saying I'm not upset about the wood. It was actually great. What wasn't great though is that being in the garage, I had a little less security, so I had more unwanted fans stalking my art. But I had painted all the left side on this wood, and a cricket was in my space. <sighs> All right, shoo. I must face cricket. Come on, move it. Get your corner a little more here. All right, thanks for your cooperation, cricket. Don't worry, everyone. It's fine. Cricket and I patched things up, and you know I have a good rep with quick with with crickets, because in elementary school, though not a fan of bugs. I did do a cricket project for, I guess, I guess you could call it a science fair. They didn't call it that, but did a cricket project. It was pretty fun. Learned a lot about crickets, which is how I, I know and can tell you that the cricket I shooed away was a girl, but yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, don't, so cricket, if you're out there listening, hey, no hard feelings. Just, just don't get in my workspace, okay? Okay. So I was wrapping up really quickly painting the lines, although I did make some mistakes, like that cabinet isn't supposed to be that far back near her legs. Ugh. But don't worry, I, I will fix that. <laughs> this is what it looked like overall, and even up close, so you can see what I'm talking about with the white gaps from the unflat surface. Um, but it, it was um, nice to finally ditch the projector after that, because I was getting kind of tired of angling myself in a weird way, not just for the camera, but also because I wanted to see what I was painting. <laughs> but I painted the cat first, and I'm glad I did, because around that time, I realized I was thinking I was going to have four heads, the cat, the granny, the guy, and the dog. But the cat was a little too small, and then it was cropped from the pie. Just really bad tangent there. But it was, um, so it, it, I just, I knew that I couldn't keep, the, I couldn't cut off the cat head, which was a relief because I actually did a decent job painting the cat head for the first time ever, and not around here yet. Uh, I'll, I'll say when I bring it out, but I brought out a fan brush for the first time ever and actually used that to paint some of the fur texture on the cat with just, when you mix it with the wood texture and then like, there's the fan strokes and then the fur and it just, ah, it looked really good. But around here, I had been painting the cat way too long, so I needed to take a break, but also get some stuff on the canvas to make it look like I was actually doing something, you know, being productive. And so I painted a lot of pink everywhere to get a sense of where the light source was, um, as for the window being the main light source. And I also used that to hide that unnecessary cabinet line, which was good, because I, I may have forgotten, you know, when you paint for too long you kind of forget the little mental notes you made in your head like hey remember to not paint a cabinet there <laughs> but I think we're getting closer to the fan brushing yeah uh, no no uh, around here yes okay that's when I brought out the fan brush <laughs> that was so anticlimactic but the cat painting was fun yeah. Yeah, and then I got started painting the granny, and of course I wanted to do the arms first because it was a test. Because I I've painted and drawn older characters before, and I uh, just but I've mainly focused on the face and not the arms. So I wanted to really start with that first to see okay, can I make the hands look kind of you know like bony and wrinkly? Can I make the arms? Can I like create age spots? Can I make it believable? And so that's what I was testing around there. And I remember my, my mom stopped by and she was like, what's with the potatoes for her hands? I was just like, <laughs> you could just, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I think that was my response actually. <laughs> but I, I, it was kind of funny. So all of this was the first day. Uh, the actually it was surprising how quickly I'd got the line work done, but this was day one Woohoo day two and uh, Here's what we've got so far. It's kind of funny like it just it doesn't show quite the same When I take a picture of it, so I took a picture and I was like I didn't have very much detail But then I get up close and I'm like 
Ooh, Millie, I did a lot. <laughs> Look at that. <clears throat> Lily, sick with a cold, Lily. You interrupted me. But yeah, day two, got back into working. It was always that, you know, motivating yourself because you have a cold and then it is cold and <laughs> it's a really big canvas. <laughs> this is one of the biggest paintings I've ever done. It was big. <laughs> and so figuring out, you know, and also I had timed thumbnail, um, you know, the look, but not the color. So that was the whole other thing was that fear of like, okay, I have an idea in my mind of what colors I want, but it's all kind of one big blob of blur. It's usually how color schemes work in my head. I can see the big chunks of color, but they're all blurred together. So then it's figuring out how to single it out. That, that's where it gets tricky. <laughs> so I knew I wanted her apron to be kind of a coral orange color. You know, it was stuff like that that I, I would just sit down and go, okay, what? What's something I'm confident about color-wise? And then once you get the color down for the first thing, then you look and you go, oh, hey, this bracelet could be brown, and, and oh, I should paint the pie. Oh, this could be a purple cardigan, and stuff like that to help things move along further. You know, you just kind of have to get started and then, and then just ignore the potato hands. Yeah, remember that. It's an important life lesson. In terms of the actual difficulty I, I would say you know you combine the three-day timeline the giant painting the cold there was also the maneuvering the camera around and over 10 hours of footage the editing was also <laughs> difficult <laughs> I've, I've spent probably 10 minutes so far in this time of trying to do this voiceover convincing the software that I in did indeed add sound to this video keeps forgetting that I did voice over here. <laughs> but over here, I'm painting the pants brown and I realized I didn't like that. So I painted them red, which was actually <laughs> came in handy because I ended up painting the wood floor brown. Duh, don't know why I didn't think about that. But it's around this point, do the same method as the uh, painting the day one where I was painting the cat. I had been painting the granny too long now. I was like, I need to paint more of the background. So same thing as the cat. So I, I started blocking out some yellow, but then I just had to stop. I was feeling awful, sick. And so then it was time to cut the holes. So I actually traced around my dad's head and uh, he punched in some holes in the center of that paper. And then he cut the holes and he was very helpful in the stand, he cut the holes. He did all the technical stuff that I, I wouldn't know how to do. But day three, I was freaking out <laughs> because I needed to get the entire thing covered in paint, you know? And so even though it seems like I didn't accomplish much, it was spending a lot of time on the characters painting the all the different color sections they have, which were smaller, so it took more time, but also getting the lighting and texture in there. So this time I had to kind of kick it to the curb and just paint the background. But also, now that the heads were cut, the holes for the heads were cut, it was a lot easier because it's really hard painting around a head, just staring at you, intimidatingly, just mocking you, when you know you can't paint that face because it's going to be removed. <sighs> I feel like I'm carrying a lot of resentment here and this is like just a time to vent. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not true. But yeah, the, this was so difficult. The background painting took the most um, motivation because it was the color part. It, it, I just didn't want it to look like color vomit. It, it was difficult. But also around this point, my mom started working with me too. So the canvas was shaking around a lot. She was behind the canvas. I did all the painting except for the gesso part. But she was behind it because there were still those wood shards there. So she was cutting up used fabric and gluing it on there so that the people in the back and the children wouldn't get splinters, you know, sticking their heads through there, touching the wood. And you'll see what that looks like in the end. But I began working on painting the pies because I figured if I go out in a blaze of glory and not finish this painting, people at least need to know that these random blobs are pie. 
Yeah, that's what I really thought. <laughs> Not. <laughs> it was more so, oh, pie. That's an easy color scheme. I'll just take these paints I already have the right colors for and get her done. <laughs> yeah. But painting that hand was fun. I don't really have anything profound to say about it. Oh, well, and those hands were fun too. But like I said, nothing profound. Just they were fun to paint. But also, um, I, I start painting granny hair and I used the fan brush. Made a comeback for the hair. <laughs> yeah, look at all that fanning going on. But also, you'll see soon, um, well, I guess you won't see it per se, but uh, I, I ended up, the dog was drawn inside profile, but once the holes were cut, I realized, oh, well, you don't really want to see like a nose next to someone's face sticking through a hole. Dog nose, yeah, that doesn't really work. So I, I ended up just painting an ear and getting rid of the dog nose altogether. So now the dog's front facing. You know, it's kind of doing a pose instead of pleading for pie. Or maybe it's doing both. But painting the stove, I think that proved to take the most of my mental capacity. <laughs> I, I, it was the thing because I knew it was going to be difficult, so I dreaded it. But it was also, okay, I gotta just sit down and grab gray, white, and black paint and just go to town. <laughs> Ooh, was that stove a troublemaker? And then also, you know, you paint over stuff and then you're like, oh, the ridges of the inside of the stove for the pie, to hold the pie are gone. So I have to paint that again. And then I have to paint the a clear coat over it to make it look like there's a door there. And it just, yeah, had its uh, challenges. But after getting everything blocked out, I added some lighting, a little more shadows, painted little fall leaf trees coming through the window and, we're done! <laughs> I survived. <laughs> and there's the back, and then here's up close everything all put together with the lighting, shadows, and all that fun stuff. This, uh, this was a very challenging project. I'm not gonna lie, I, I it was not easy, <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it's a really big project. So there's also that reward of seeing something of that I created with my hands that big. I mean, life size right in front of me. It was, you get that artist moment where you get to like stand and stare at it and then step back then stroke your chin a few times, smirk, and then ultimately beam with pride at what you created. And lastly, here it is at the pie festival. With all this being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and may God bless you in your life and your art. Bye!